Hello everybody, welcome back for another tech tip here at 45 Drives and um, well we were going to do a different topic today but there was a lot of great engagement and questions on the last video we put out about Seagate hammer drives, the really really dense next generation of hard drives and uh, we figured we'd come and address some of the questions on there and some, some of the things I might have missed in that first video. So thanks for watching that video, thanks for the comments and everything. Today we're going to talk about uh, the acoustic levels of these drives. We're going to talk about temperature. Uh, we're going to talk explicitly about rebuild times and how long it takes to rebuild the ZFS array with these things. And then we'll, have, we'll talk about reliability because that's, that's a big one on everyone's mind. So why don't we get into it? Okay, so the first couple questions that came in, sound, are they any louder? than their counterparts, the other drives in the family. Um, and the answer is no, they are exactly the same. They're about 28 to 30 decibels idle, 32 to 34 decibels when they're seeking and the, and the arms are going. This is the same specs as all the other large dense Exos drives. And this makes sense because the, the arm has changed, the head on the arm that seeks has changed, maybe a little heavier, but it's not really gonna change the acoustics. The dominating force is that spinning disc, so that makes sense to me. Um, anyway, sound levels, same as uh, nothing new in the hammer drives. Uh, another discussion was, are they, do they run hotter than their counterparts? And well, um, long story short, no, not really. It's negligible. They do run a little bit hotter, uh, on a test we did here, the 30 terabytes averaged under load to be 27 degrees, where 20 terabyte Exos drives averaged 26 degrees. To me, that's negligible. Um, obviously, your, the environment these in will vary that a little bit, but where we're comparing the two, it shouldn't affect it too much. Um, but this makes sense to me as well, because remember when we talked about power, we showed that it does use a little bit more power than the other drives, but not a whole lot, and that'll make sense because more power, more temperature. More temperature, run hotter, I don't know. You know what I mean. Next, there was some talk about how long rebuilds take and like explicitly how long would a rebuild take. So, with the ZFS array, we did this test. Now, of course, this, the rebuild time on a ZFS array will completely vary on how full the pool is. So, let me tell you about the setup we used. Um, our RAID Z1 array of three hammer drives was 69.37 terabytes full. Um, so that's about 84% of the uh, usable space, um, taking in account for uh, parity. So when I replace a drive, if you do that math out, that's about 25 terabytes per drive. So that's, we have to, or ZFS has to rebuild 25 terabytes worth of data. Um, that took 52.1 hours, which, is what I'd expect because if you do the math out, um, 25 terabytes over 52.1 hours equates out to about 134 megabytes a second, which is not quite the complete sustained rate of one of these drives, but when you factor in um, a little bit of random I.O. and everything that you have to do as well, then uh, that, that sounds about right to me. So to rebuild a 84% full pool of a hammer drive, 30 terabyte hammer drive that died, it took 52.1 hours. And the other big uh, discussion point in the comments was reliability and the reli how long these drives will last relative to the conventional magnetic recording drives. Um, which it's a good thing to consider because it is a fact that these drives are more complex than their counterparts. There's more parts, if there's more parts, there's another chance something can fail. That's just that's how it works. Now. How reliable are they gonna be over time? Well, we're gonna find out as we use them, as everyone uses them, we're, we're using them here in 45 and everything, but what we really have to do in this case is trust the vendor and the engineering that Seagate is bringing here, and I personally do. And here's why. They've spent, this isn't a rushed out technology, they have spent years and years and years and billions of dollars on the development of this technology and would not be bringing this to market if they were worried about the reliability. Because they know that if their drives fail, it ruins their name in the game and it's all done. Like there was nothing more important than the reliability of a storage device. Because at the end of the day, that's the thing that keeps everything safe. Now, 
with all that said, that was more personal anecdotal opinion. Um, Seagate has published information about the reliability of these drives and what they've done to, to show that they do far exceed customer reliability requirements. So let me read you a couple um, points from a, a report they put out here. Um, Chris will link it in, in the video or so it'll be somewhere convenient. They state the industry standard specification for nearline hard drive reliability anticipates that a drive will be able to transfer 550 terabytes per year or 2,750 terabytes over a five year period. Um, so on a hard drive with 18 read and write heads, each head is expected to transfer 152 terabytes reliably over five years. And so with that said, they've stated that the Seagate development team has demonstrated that a single hammer read and write head transferring data for 6,000 hours reliably equaled to 3.2 petabytes of data transferred on that single head. So that's about more than 20 times the amount of data required by that spec. So they're confident, we're confident, and, but what, trust but verify is something we like to say here. And so what we're gonna do is with the drives we have, we're gonna load them up in the server, put it in the rack, and I'm gonna consistently read and write to these things. Graph the cumulative data over time, and we're gonna check in periodically to see any smart issues, any data issues, if there's anything going on, and uh, why not? Why not verify ourselves? So. Uh, I hope those address the issue, or not the issues, the questions and comments that came up in the, in the chat, comment section, whatever you call it. Uh, we appreciate the engagement. And if you wanna hear mo more about hammer drives or anything on this topic at all, uh, let us know and we can do a deeper dive. We've got some friends at Seagate and HD Store, like I mentioned before. Maybe we can do some more specific uh, content on reliability or anything, but let us know what you wanna see next. Thanks for watching. You're way too cool.